When properly trained, your dog can find being crated reassuring and a visual cue to relax and go to sleep. Crates can be used to aid in housebreaking, dealing with fear or reactivity, introducing new dogs to the household, and in rehabilitation from illness or injury. Crates are also commonly used in transporting dogs, in grooming salons, and in veterinary clinics. Odds are your dog will need to be crated at some point. The following is a force-free method of crate training. It will not involve your dog being shut up against his will. There will be no crying, whining, barking, or scrabbling in an attempt to escape. Force-free methods are emotionally and psychologically best for most dogs. However, this is a method that requires some time and patience. You will need one crate, appropriately sized for your dog, one pouch full of high-value treats, one food dispensing toy, such as a Kong. Step one, crate equals treats. Begin with the crate door wide open. Sit next to the crate with your dog and your bag of goodies. Show your dog the treats and then toss one into the crate. Your dog should follow the treat into the crate to eat it. However, if you have a dog who is already afraid of a crate or is nervous, she may not go in. If so, put a treat right by the door and start with just rewarding her for approaching the crate. Note that your dog can come straight out of the crate once they've eaten the treat if they want to. It is entirely their choice. The rule is simple. Going in the crate earns a treat. Not going in the crate or coming out of the crate earns no treat. Play this game for a few minutes. If all you get at this point is a pup zooming in and out of the crate for treats, that's fine for now. If your pup goes in and stays in to see if more treats will happen, reward that. Continue to give treats for as long as your dog chooses to remain in the crate. However, don't shut the door yet. Step two, crate and lie down equals more treats. Hopefully, your dog is starting to realize that going in the crate is a good way to earn treats. Ideally, your pup is choosing to go into the crate of his own free will sometimes. This means you're ready for step two. For step two, sit next to the crate. When your dog goes in for the first treat, start popping a treat or two through the bars or ventilation holes in the back of the crate. Your dog is probably still remaining standing in the crate. Now, put two or three treats further back into the crate and see if he lies down to eat them. If he does lie down, reward that with a small handful through the bars, ideally delivered so he doesn't have to get up to reach them. Give lots of calm praise too. If your pup is already going in, turning around and getting comfortable, fantastic. When he's going in and lying down and expecting treats, you can begin to pause for just a second before giving the treats. This is the beginning of building up the amount of time he stays in the crate. Again, do not shut that crate door yet. Step three, moving around. By now, your dog should be zipping into the crate and lying down, and he probably won't need bribing with the treat, but he will still need treats for staying in there. Now, you can begin to shift your position beside the crate while your pup is inside. This means you can creep away on your knees or just scoot to the side at first, then creep back and reward him for choosing to stay put. Remember to move only a tiny bit to start with and keep the time you spend away from him very brief. Step four, find your feet. It may take you several sessions or several days to get to step four. You are ready for this stage if you can creep away from your dog while he is in the crate in a variety of directions for a minimum of 30 seconds and ideally up to two minutes before returning and rewarding him. It's important not to rush this stage because now you're going to be standing up instead of sitting or kneeling by the crate. Wait until your dog is relaxed in the crate. Stand up slowly and drop a few treats into the crate. Then squat or kneel back down. For this stage, you're just going to be working on standing up vertically, rewarding him, and going back down again. Do not step away from the crate horizontally at this point. Step five, stepping away. Your dog is ready for this step when you find that your dog is starting to choose to go in the crate even when it isn't a training session. If that's the case, randomly reward him for that. This next step is to ask him to go in the crate and stay there while you stand up and step away, just one step at first, and then step back and reward. Build this up over the course of several sessions until you can easily take several steps away, pause, return, and reward, and your dog stays in the crate. Really resist the urge to lock him in there right now. There's a good chance you get away with it at this stage, but you could cause a problem if he panics. And the last thing we want is him learning that he can't get out. This would make him fear the crate. Step six, going away. Start this step when your dog is going into the crate 
is lying down, falling asleep in there, is happy to eat meals in there, and is sometimes even going in the crate when you're not in the room. Now for your training session, you'll start with your dog in the crate. Reward him, step away, step back, and reward him again. Walk around the crate, reward him again. Then pop out of sight for a second, and then back, and reward him, and so on and so forth. Repeat this and occasionally mix it up with easier exercises so that going in the crate doesn't always mean you'll be leaving. Do keep working on this stage until you can leave the room for a few minutes and even leave the house and maybe go out into the yard for a few minutes and then return to find that your dog hasn't moved from the crate. If you come back and your dog is not in the crate, it's likely you've been gone too long or were too far away. So make a note of that and go back a step or two. Step seven, closing the door. Yes, really. So now you have a dog who loves the crate, wants to be in the crate, stays in the crate while you move around the house hoping for a reward. Now you're going to go all the way back down to step one, but now you'll push the crate door closed. You will be seated by the crate again as you were in the beginning, putting treats through the bars of the crate just like before. Gradually rework your way through all the steps with the door pushed closed, but not latched shut. Here's the important part. The second your dog approaches the door or reaches out to nudge it or paw it, fling the door open fast before your dog opens it. You do not at any stage want your dog to try to get the door open himself. If he does though, say nothing, give your dog a second and see if he offers to go back in the crate. If he does, reward him. If he doesn't, toss a treat in the crate and start again. What your dog is learning here is that he is never trapped in the crate. Even if it looks like he is, you're opening the door and releasing him before he feels trapped. But there's never a reward for coming out. In the end, your dog won't care if the door is open or closed because being in the crate has always been rewarding eventually. And coming out has not only never been an issue, but also isn't rewarding. Now, gradually rework your way through all the steps with the door pushed closed, but not latched shut. You'll need to stay near enough the crate that you can flip the door open fast and work steadily enough that you're sure your dog won't try to get out before you're ready to release him. Step eight, locking the door. To introduce the door being locked, again, go back a few steps. This time, after a few repetitions with the door pushed shut, lock it, wait a few seconds without moving, and then unlock it and carry on the session. Step nine, increasing the time he can be crated. Your dog is ready for the final stages when you can step outside the room and even leave the house for as long as four or five minutes and your dog remains relaxed in the locked crate. Now you build duration for real, sometimes leaving him to wait slightly longer and sometimes a little less. Again, don't do this as an exact linear progression. If you have him stay in the crate for longer and longer and longer each session, he's going to predict that the crate now means being left for longer and longer amounts of time, and that's not fun for him. Instead, mix things up. Maybe he's in there for five minutes on day one, but on day two, you stay in the same room as the crate and don't even shut the door on him. Maybe on day three, he's in there for 10 minutes, but you're in and out of the house. And on day four, you only do five minutes, but you're sitting next to him reading a magazine and ignoring him. The point is, it's gradual, but it's no big deal for him, and it's not a predictor for something awful. Because he's never felt trapped, he's never felt any reinforcing relief at being released from the crate, and so it's not an ordeal being in the crate. Keeping your dog crate trained. It's a good idea to keep rewarding your dog for being in the crate, even after he seems fully crate trained and totally fine with it. It's also a good idea to pop him in there for a minute or two when you answer the door or when a guest comes in, or to give him a really good treat, just so that he always feels it's a great place to be and it doesn't mean you're going out. Never use your crate as a place to shut a dog as a punishment. It must remain a safe and rewarding place and he must like being in there. Don't abuse your dog's good nature and shut him in there for more than four hours at a time, with the exception of overnights. And don't allow children to tease or pester your dog while he's in the crate. Subscribe and be notified when we post new content. Thanks for watching.